it's me, Ashley. I am doing another video about autoimmune conditions. And as I talked about last video, I have quite a few. So today I'm going to narrow the focus and I'm gonna talk about one specific disease, which is mixed connected tissue disease or MCTD. Just a quick abbreviation, so from now on when you hear me say MCTD, it's Mixed Connected Tissue Disease, all right? Like I said last time, I have a bit of a memory issue, so I'm going to be using notes because this is very specific information that if you are curious or you are learning or you have this or you even have a loved one that might have this, that you get the correct information. Um, but I would like to just say, disclaimer, I am not a doctor. I am not a medical professional in any way. Um, the information I'm providing in my video is for educational purposes only. Um, the, the information that I give you is not to help you diagnose, cure yourself, or prevent this disease in any way. It is just to help you educate yourself about the information that is out there. All right, so without further ado, Let's get into it. So mixed connected tissue disease or MCTD is a rare disorder that is made from three different connected tissue disorders. I'm gonna go over each one of the symptoms for each one of those diseases because the symptoms that are MCTD are really the formulation of three other connected tissue diseases. The first of the three connected tissue diseases associated with MCTD is systemic lupus erythemiosis. I hope I'm saying that right. It's lupus. And these specific symptoms are symptoms of lupus include inflammation in connective tissues such as cartilage and the lining of blood vessels. These connective tissues provide strength and flexibility to structures throughout the body. Fatigue, fever, joint pain, stiffness and swelling, butterfly shaped rash across the face and rashes on the body skin lesions that appear or worsen with sun exposure, fingers and toes that turn white or blue when exposed to cold, which is Raynaud's, shortness of breath, chest pain, dry eyes, headaches, confusion, and memory loss. The next we're gonna talk about is scleroderma. There are many symptoms that go along with this, and I am gonna put them here. Symptoms of scleroderma include swelling of the fingers, Raynaud's, joints freezing in permanent positions called contractures, damage to the gastrointestinal system, lungs, heart, and kidneys may develop, and also abnormal thickening and hardening of the skin. The next is poly, polymyosis. And uh, there are quite a few symptoms that I experience personally that are in this bracket from this connective tissue disease. And I'm gonna put those here. Symptoms of polymyosis are that it can be triggered by an autoimmune disease, difficulty swallowing, aches and pains in several joints, inflammation of the muscles, or the meiosis, which is accompanying muscle pain and weakness. Also with polymyosis, there could be nerve damage and scarring commonly at the lower end of the esophagus. This can cause hypomotility. Damage to the intestines can interfere with food absorption and you can get malabsorption and cause weight loss. This can also cause vitamin deficiencies. Polymyosis can make it difficult to do everyday things. You may notice that it's harder to get up or down the stairs, lifting your arms even see, up or down uh, causes pain and stiffness. Um, you know, getting in and out of your chair is difficult. Um, as the inflammation gets worse, um, around the body, the pain and weakness gets worse. Um, you know, you can get weakness in your wrists, in your ankles, and uh, in your lower arm areas. I've got no upper body strength because of this. Um, and even, you know, sometimes I get like floppy like wrists um, just because they're, they're weak and they don't do exactly what they're supposed to do. Mixed connective tissue disease affects many different people from many different walks of life, but it tends to affect women under 30 the most often. Um, I started experiencing my symptoms personally when I was 19. Um, we didn't know what was wrong with me then, and it took many, many years to get a diagnosis. 
Doctors don't know 100% what causes mixed connective tissue disease, but they do know that it's autoimmune. That just means that your immune system mistakes healthy cells for bad cells and starts attacking them. I also believe there's a genetic component to mixed connective tissue disease because it has been found that in some cases, many members of the same family have the same disease. There are many different ways to treat mixed connective tissue disease, and this is really specific to a person. Um, there's medication, there is physical therapy, there is um, alternative treatments, there is um, you know diet, like I said, I do the AIP, which I love, um, and I will do a video on here real soon. But things like medication don't always work. Uh, they, they don't always help, um, and sometimes they hurt. Uh, for a while, I was on a drug called methotrexate, and that drug is basically like low-dose chemo, and it made me violently ill for days. And then right around the time that I was starting to like feel better and perk up, was time for me to take the medication again just to feel like poop. <laughs> and I wasn't about that, so I actually stopped taking that medication with my doctor's approval. There are some um, alternatives. Uh, I've heard a lot of people like to do this thing called cupping. Um, I'm not exactly sure what all entails. I just know that you, they put little like suction cups on their body, but some people really love it. I feel that's, I haven't tried it, so I have no opinion on that. Um, I know physical activity is highly, highly recommended for people with mixed connective tissue disease. Um, but as if you, if you suffer from mixed connective tissue disease, you know, it's really difficult. It's really, really hard to, to find the energy to exercise every day, to, to push through the pain that sometimes is debilitating. Uh, I feel like some days that's a harder than others um, to do. Uh, there's also massage therapy, which I love. Um, I do have a fibromyalgia aspect of things, so my skin gets very sensitive and the pressure points get really tender. So um, I don't always, you know, get like hour long massages or anything, but I have gotten um, a, a, a massage and I have really found that it has helped my muscles to sort of relax and like release. Sometimes I get, like I said, really bad cramping in my muscles. That like little bit of massage really, really helps. For me, I have found out that it's a combination of all the treatments above that really, really help the best. I also find that heat and ice help me quite a bit. I have a really nice, big, long, like it's like this big, right, like this big, um, a heating pad that I actually just kind of carry around with me. If I'm gonna be chilling watching like movies, um, like last night, kids and I watched uh, Rec Ralph Breaks the Internet, and I sure as heck had that heating pad on the whole time. You know, just any opportunity you can to give your body a break we should. Um, I also like ice. Um, sometimes I'll freeze water bottles and I'll like rub them on my tender points. Um, sometimes if I get like a really bad headache, I'll put ice and an ice pack on the base of my neck. Ice and heat, um, my diet, my AIP diet, and uh, medication are right now um, some of my best friends. Okay, so I'm gonna take a little sippy break. Oh gosh, I'm drinking. I don't know, <laughs> it's not on the thing. Okay, so unfortunately there is no cure for mixed connective tissue disease, but there are lots of treatments as we've talked about. For me, on a positive note, I have really gotten to know a lot of very cool people um, since I got diagnosed with this disease. You know, people that I meet in public, people that I've met on forums like uh, like Facebook or even YouTube. You know, I, I have one of my favorite YouTubers has mixed connective tissue disease. Um, so it, it isn't all bad. You know, I have learned to be resourceful. I have learned to be strong. I have learned, you know, kind of like what I'm made out of. You know, some days I laugh, you know, I function at like a pain level of like a six that some people would call like a 10 and wouldn't get out of bed. You know, our our perspective on what we can and can't push through is different than other people's. You know, I learned to use my voice um, because I don't know how many of you have had this problem, but I've had doctors straight up tell me that I was making this all up. 
that it was all in my head that, you know, I was being over dramatic because I'm a woman. And it's like, uh, no. <laughs> and I fought for myself and I pushed through and I found my voice and I stand up for myself now, not just in the medical community, but in everyday life. I am tougher, I am smarter, and I'm more resilient than I was before I had mixed connective tissue disease. Now, am I happy that I have a disease like this? It's not really a happy or sad, it just is what it is. I have faith in God's plan for me, I know this is part of it, and I really do believe that, you know, I'm gonna get through this, and I hope that we can do it together. So, that's about all I have today. I know it was a little educational and it was a little bit like, ah, you know, it's a lot of information, um, you know, but it's good to know. It's good to educate yourself. And if you have any questions, we'll leave it in the comment section below. If not, I will see you on Friday.